Welcome to Anchor Park United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ken Hagler, also known as Jedi Pastor Ken, and I welcome you here wherever you happen to be on this July 22nd, 2020, as we gather together to worship God. I hope that you've taken an opportunity to note some of the announcements that were in the slides just ahead of this welcome and our opening hymn today. As we gather here, note that you can find out more information through the many links that are on our website and are in the comment section below, and I hope that you'll take opportunity to learn more about that. Please note that as we continue to move forward, our reimagining team was continuing to work hard to help develop guidelines for the reopening of our churches in uh, here in our community and as they are in the United Methodist Church around the country. Uh, we're doing the best that we can as we move forward and want to make and create a safe space for you to gather in worship and to do the work of the gospel that we are being called to do by Jesus Christ. As we gather here on this Sunday morning, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather here to worship you once again, thankful for the opportunities that are given to us to serve and to worship you. God, I pray for the people of Anchor Park United Methodist Church as we together continue to seek to be your church in our community of Anchorage. Our ministry is one that impacts so many people and so many families in our community. We pray that you would help us and guide us as we seek to continue to be an active and dynamic church, even with the, the phases and the restraints that we have to deal with during these days and these times. Help us to be creative. Inspire us to be the people of God in our community. We ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
together, we look to the ancient words of the church and the Jewish face in the book of Psalms. Today we'll be looking at Psalm 126 for our responsive reading in the Psalter. I invite you to join with me and you will see that on the screen and in the worship guide, those places for you to respond and to read the Psalms alongside. Let us begin. Psalm 126 verse 1. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, starting verse 28. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas into the praetorium. And it was early, and they themselves did not enter into the praetorium, so that they would not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Therefore Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man Jesus? They answered and said to him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. So Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, We are not permitted to put anyone to death to fulfill the words of Jesus, which he spoke, signifying by what kind of death he was about to die. Therefore Pilate entered again into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we gather here today and We hear those words. I want you to just kind of hold those close because I want to share a story. It's a story of of my growing up. You see, when I was a kid in the summers of down in Mississippi, um, we would often find uh, opportunities to to get out into the woods. My friend Scott had a fishing hole back behind his house, and I rode my my bike over to visit him one day. And uh, we ventured on out into uh, into the woods to find this little fishing hole that he had. It's a nice little fishing hole, and I can't ever say that I was ever much of a fisherman, though I did pretty good last year when I was out salmon fishing in Alaska. Um, but that's a whole other story altogether. But but for us, we were, we were out in a little fishing hole, and he had his pole out, and we had spent some time talking, and he was fishing, and we were having a good old time. And all of a sudden, there was a tug on the line. Well, Scott kept rolling in it, rolling in the The line, and as it got a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and there's a little bit of fight, a little bit of pull back and forth, 
a little black thing rose to the top and both of us were like oh man it's like a tire some junk in the in the pond oh great well we're gonna roll it in anyway to get it off the line so this guy kept rolling in rolling in we got to i don't know it's about three feet from the shore that this object was and it, it had continued to pull a little bit which seemed kind of odd but about three feet from the shore all of a sudden this head popped up it was a head as big as my fist and it was a Mississippi snapping turtle. It let out the biggest hiss that we had ever seen. I don't know how big the shell was. It was massive. All Scott and I could do was say, you can have the fishing pole. <laughs> we tossed it and we went the other direction. I don't know whatever happened to that fishing pole or that turtle. I'm not sure Scott went back to the fishing hole. I can tell you that I never did. But I sure learned some lessons that day when it came to dealing with a Mississippi snapping turtle. And the lesson really had to do, in many ways, with truth. You see, when we come face to face with truth, there, there really is only two options that we have. One is to throw in the towel and walk or run away, or is to wrestle with what we are confronted with. As we hear these words from the Gospel of John, we are at a place where we're like Pilate, having to deal with truth. You see, the Pharisees and Sadducees that made up the Sanhedrin, the, the religious rulers of the day, they were bound to a certain truth that they had come to understand through the law and the teachings of the Jewish people. They didn't feel like they had any options. They were protectors of truth. And for them, there was no swaying what that was or what it might be. But one of those truths that they had to deal with was that they didn't have the ability to put anyone to death. And here was Jesus, a Jewish rabbi, who was teaching things that in their mind was in conflict with the truth that they had come to understand. But inside the praetorium, there was Pilate. Now, Pilate, being the leader of the community at that time there in Jerusalem, he had a responsibility to enforce the law. And so it was to him that the Sanhedrin takes Jesus to be examined. Now, Pilate being from Roman education, had philosophy as his focus. And for him, truth could be any number of things. We don't have enough information to know what, what type of philosophy, particularly that, that Pilate subscribed to. But clearly in this, this passage, we find for Pilate that truth can be debatable. What is truth? He asks. And so it is, we have this conflict that comes into play between those who have a truth and those, like Pilate, who aren't really sure what truth is. And here, in between these two, is Jesus. What do we do with Jesus? This seems to be a, an issue that we all have. And in these weeks that I've had the opportunity to, to do these sermons remotely, um, and uh, <laughs> I've only met anybody from Anchor Park on, online, it's an interesting time because I, I wanted to share with you passages like this one that are significant for my faith journey as a pastor. Because to me, Jesus is the real crux of the issue. Jesus is that point of time. Jesus is that, that Mississippi snapping turtle that we've got to deal with. What do we believe about Jesus? And so rather than get into debates about what religion is right or true and what types of pluralistic philosophy we have to deal with, 
we need to look at what is it Jesus is saying here. You see, the Pharisees keep asking the words that we find in Mark 16, uh, 14, verse 61, where they say, are you Christ, the son of the blessed one? And then we have Pilate who asks, are you a king then? But what Jesus keeps drawing us back to and pointing to is words from John 14, 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Every single one of those phrases and words matters when it comes to who Jesus is and what he's saying about his ministry and his calling. When Jesus says, I am, Jesus is referring back to his Jewish heritage from the Old Testament. What God said to Moses when he asked, who do I say is sending me to Pharaoh? And God says, I am who I am. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, those are code words that Jesus is aligning himself as the Son of God, the Son of Man. When Jesus says, I am the way, he refers to the fact that he is the road, he is the highway, the way, the highway. He is highway one. And when Jesus says, I am the life, it's a reference, the word in the Greek is zoe, and it means the life, very life itself. And finally, when he says, I am the truth, it's aletheia, the absolute certainty of things. So when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus is, is saying some very specific things that we need to deal with. Truth can be known, not just as a thing that we can handle or study and look at, and read about Jesus is saying, I am, I am alive. I am living. It isn't just knowing about truth. It's about knowing the one who is truth. What good news this is for us in our lives. And when we talk about these things, we're talking about a different realm of understanding. I know there's also a, a, a huge temptation for us many times to look at our faith and, and try to put our spiritual lives into a box related to history or English or philosophy or to science. We want to try to create this realm where we can use terms which are fine, but they don't speak fully in our physical world to the spiritual truths that are revealed to our souls. Things which we know. How the hypotheses of the scientific method aren't going to prove. Things that we want to have regarding historical accuracies, we're probably not going to find. Archaeology is going to give us a whole lot of things as it's done. It's revealed so many things about the ancient world that confirm exactly what is talked about throughout Scripture and many of the truths of, of science that Scripture does talk about have been proven as well. We can look at many of those things. And there's other things that leave us scratched in our heads going, what were they thinking when they wrote that? Hmm. But when it comes to the issues of the soul and the spirit, and when it comes to this question about who Jesus is, well, that's something that you and I need to encounter. It's a who that we need to encounter. And it's at this point that our lives are changed. It's at this point that we find ourselves in the place of the Sadducees, or we find ourselves in the place of Pilate, or we find ourselves in the place of a ragtag group of men and women who Jesus said to, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of humanity. And they left everything 
and follow. This is what it means to follow after Jesus Christ. This is what our calling is. Now, thankfully, you don't have to run <laughs> headfirst into a Mississippi snapping turtle like I did. At least I hope you don't. I hope that you'll take these words today to, to help you to come to a place where you are coming to meet Jesus in a real way. Whether that's through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, or your witness, you have that opportunity right now to make Jesus a part of your life. That's right. Right in these moments where we're here on video, Jesus wants to meet you. And the opportunity is there right now. For you to have that conversation one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Use your words. Be gentle with yourself. Be patient with yourself. It's a messy kind of thing. It's, well, it doesn't have to always be. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Lord, I hope that this, this passage and today's message will encourage you to do is to be like Jesus' mother Mary, who made space when God came into her life and said that he was going to do something unique and special. Or when the angels went to Joseph, her fiancé, and said the very same thing. And this couple made space for God to enter in to their lives and into our world. Where are you going to make space for God to enter in? Whether it's a time or it's a place in your home or whatever, where are you going to make space? The, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanders, they couldn't make space for Jesus. Pilate struggled and wrestled with the truth. He couldn't make space for Jesus. But the disciples made space for Jesus. And today, disciples still make space for Jesus, even if it's just five minutes a day. How will you make space for Jesus? I'll encourage you, if you look back through my blogs and my Instagram and Facebook, um, there's a number of breath prayers. I've been doing breath prayers and publishing those online for about three years now. It's a simple practice of prayer that helps us to pray something that's on our heart. I invite you whatever it might be, whether that's the prayer, maybe it's in how you serve, maybe it's writing a, a note to a friend. Make space for Jesus. For that's really what that's all about. If there's going to be place for truth in your life, we have to make space. Will you? I pray you will. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we go to God in prayer, that you know that there's a place and opportunity now for you to take those things to Jesus that are on your heart. Let's talk. Jesus, we need to talk to you today. A lot of stuff's going on in our world. It has been for quite a while. It's a mess. When we get right down to it, sometimes our lives are a mess too. This one hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is, it, it's, it's kind of what helps us get through the week many times. I need to make space for you today. And I'm sorry that I haven't done it as much as I should have. Forgive me for the things that I've done and the things that I didn't do. I made more space for you. I want to be more like you. I really do, Jesus. We all do. We need help. You promised that a counselor would come to us when you went away and that you would send the Holy Spirit. God, send that Spirit fresh upon us today. 
May we know you are with us. May your spirit testify with us that we are the children of God, that we might have that assurance. Help us to make place for you in our lives. We've got a lot of things that we've been thinking about lately, things we want to take to you, things we're thankful for and things we're worried about. Well, right now, we want to share those things with you. You promised to hear us when we pray, Jesus. We trust in those words. And you've never given us reason to doubt. So as we come to our close of, of service, we pray that prayer, those words that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power the glory forever. Amen. I'm so thankful that you took time to be with us today and for your continuing support of the ministries of Anchor Park United Methodist Church. If this service has been meaningful to you, I hope that you will consider how you might support uh, the work and ministry that we're doing in Anchorage, uh, Alaska, and invite you to follow one of the links below to Go to our website where uh, you can give online to support what we're about and the ministries of the United Methodist Church in our community. There's no doubt about it. We need to make a place for truth in this world. Whether the world wants to hear it or not, Jesus said the world's going to have issues with it. But it's really hard when the things that are revealed in the life of the Christian are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Because against those things, Scripture tells us in Galatians, there is no law. There's no law against those things. And we live in a world right now that needs those things, that fruit of the Spirit. Let's make a place for Jesus here and here. Receive the benediction. Go from this place, make place wherever you are for Jesus. Live the truth and share the light. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as you go, sing our closing song, God be with you until we meet again. And soon that time will come.